There the common question asked by the non-Muslim is, I have placed it number four, is that when Islam is a religion of peace, how come it was spread by the sword? When Islam is a religion of peace, then how come it was spread by the sword? Islam comes from the root word salam, as I mentioned, which means peace. It also means submitting our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is a religion which wants to spread peace throughout the world. But there are some people, some human beings, who do not want peace to prevail in the world for their own benefits. You know, so that they can have certain benefits for their own material desires. And we know there are such people. To prevent such people, you may even have to use force. That is the reason that the police many a times use this force on the criminals to spread peace. So sometimes you may have to use force to let peace prevail in the world. Similarly, Islam is a religion of peace, but sometimes it says that when there are some people who prevent the spreading of the peace, you can use force to put them in the place so that the peace can prevail in the world. The best reply to this question posed by non-Muslims, that Islam was spread by the is given by a very famous historian by the name of Dilesi O'Leary in the book Islam at the Crossroad on page number 8. And he says that history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races, is the most fantastically absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. You know, we Muslims, we ruled Spain for about 800 years. We didn't use the sword. Later on, the Crusaders came and they wiped out the Muslims. There was not a single Muslim who could openly give the Adhan. We didn't use the sword. The Muslims, Alhamdulillah, we were the masters of Arabia for the past 1400 years. The Arabs, the ruling Arabia, for the past 1400 years. For a few years, the Britishers came. For a few years, the French came. But overall, we were ruling Arabia and still, Alhamdulillah, ruling for the past 1400 years. And do you know today, there are 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christian. Coptic Christian means they are Christian since birth, since generation. The fathers, the forefathers are Christian. 14 million Coptic Christians you have today who are Arab. If the Muslims wanted, we could have converted each and every Arab at the point of the sword. These 14 million Coptic Christians who are Arabs, they are bearing witness that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. India, the country where I come from, do you know that the Muslims, we ruled India for a thousand years. If we wanted, we could have converted each and every non-Muslim at the point of the sword. But we didn't do it. You know today, there are more than 80% Indians who are non-Muslims. These 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada. They are bearing witness that Islam wasn't spread by the sword. Today, the country which has the maximum population of Muslims is Indonesia. I am asking you the question, which Muslim army went to Indonesia? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Which sword? Thomas Carlyle, who is a famous historian, he gives the reply. Sword, indeed it is the sword. You have to get the sword. Every new opinion initially originates in the mind of one. One man against the whole world. In one man's mind, it dwells alone. It will do little good that he takes the sword and tries to spread it. You have to get your sword. Which sword is talking about? Even if we had the metal sword, we could not use it. Because the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 256, like Rahafiddin, there is no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. You have to present the truth to them. You cannot force anyone to convert at the point of the sword or the point of the gun. You have to present the truth. If they accept it, Alhamdulillah, if they don't accept it, no problem. The sword which Thomas Carlyle is talking about is the sword of the intellect. As the glorious Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, It is invite all the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best in the spiritual. It is the sword of wisdom, sword of hikmah, sword of intellect. 
there was an article which came in the Plain Truth magazine. It was a reproduction of an article which came in the Reader Digest Almanac, year book 1986. And it gave the statistics of the increase of the major world religion between 1934 to 1984. In the span of 50 years, it gave the increase of the major world religion. Number one was Islam, 235%. Christianity, only 47%. I am asking the question, which war took place between 1934 and 1984, which converted millions of people to Islam? Which war? Which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. I am asking you, which sword is asking these Westerners to revert to Islam? Which sword? Who is forcing them today? The fastest growing religion in America and Europe today is Islam. Dr. Adam Pearson says, he gives a very good reply. That people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. 